So, when we last stand it off, uh, you guys were just entering Xanavar's house, and some of you were snooping. Fujio and Dante both got nat 20s, um, Gash got a 12, and Elo got a 17. It's really fucked up <laughs> how many nat 20s have been rolled today. I, I know! Dude, right. Dude I'm gonna right very... now, I was rolling my dice just to see the likelihood of certain numbers. I get 20s pretty often. I've only gotten it's one this entire like, game. Uh, I get that one so often. <laughs> yeah, I've also gotten They're that fun. one so often. Stop right. stealing from my house! I have a three. <laughs> okay. So, um, there's like a central walkway in the middle that branches off into uh, two different sections of the house. One side of the house, immediately as you enter, there's a little sitting room that like branches off into a little greenhouse in the corner. Off on the other side, there's like a kind of grandiose dining room that has a set of double doors that open into it that are closed but have glass so you're able to see into the dining room. And then just past the dining room, there's like a little hallway between that and the kitchen. It's meant to be like, you know, a place where servers can like put down their trays and like get up things and put things on trays and like, you know, it's just like a little work area between that and the kitchen. And then uh, in a doorway just past the sitting room, there is like a general library sitting office area that just kind of like overlooks things and it's like a nice little little sitting room if you want to do some research. And then in the, the main hall where you guys were walking through before, if you continue down it further, uh, it opens up into the backyard with the medical herb garden. And it's like a really fancy looking garden, it's very pretty. Most of the uh, things in the garden haven't been tended to in a while, so it's overgrown and some of them are a little wilted. But you get the general point that at one point it was like a beautiful, well tended to garden. There's also a staircase that goes up that leads into a different set of rooms. The door at the top of the stairs is closed and locked. And then if you continue on to the living room through the greenhouse, there is a little ladder that leads up to Xanavar's room. I'm following Elo and Krusty and in the game and now. Dante to make sure they don't steal anything of major importance. Hey, don't you got something else better to do? <laughs> no. Yeah, why you gotta snitch? Let me... yeah. I'm not snitching, hey, sorry, I'm... but I am preventing oh. petty theft from the man who was lending us yeah. his house. There's also a wine cellar in the kitchen, I forgot to mention, that's kind of important. Oh. Well, yeah. well, yeah. looks at Dante, well. Rich people house, um, you steal from what, my what house. What rooms are you guys interested in searching? I want to see what <laughs> the dad's room is like. Okay, the door is a locked. Lot, if you will. Oh. oh. Can I fucking kick it in? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'll make a strength check. Yes! <laughs> or athletics, I guess it would be. These are Gash's ethics. She won't let you steal from her friend, but she will kick the door of her friend's missing dad down. I'm not, I'm not gonna add anything to it. That's a shit roll. If Dude, Gash can't it. open it, I will I will go underneath. What if, what if I roll? <laughs> <laughs> you wanna see if you can kick the door down with I'm your little wizard squishy. twig legs? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> is there like space underneath the door or does the door go from like ceiling to floor? It's like uh, <laughs> where there would be a seal for underneath the door. It's been sealed off with like one of those metal borders on the bottom. Ew, oh, boo, we hate yeah. that, that shit. Climb boys. Oh. This yeah. really is a rich person house. They prepare for everything. It is. You can't believe this house is fucking slime proof. <laughs> right, Dante, what'd you roll for your wizard twig legs? Uh, not a natural one, but a one. <laughs> one! Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you see Gash do it, and she has difficulty, but like somewhere in your brain you're like, I don't know, I think this is my moment. And you like, <laughs> you kick the door and you fall directly on your ass. Elo's gonna <laughs> laugh. I saw it. Elo we saw it. All watching. You can see the laughter in Gash's eyes. I pull my hood over my head. <laughs> it's, oh. uh, it's Elo's turn. Oh. Elo's also gonna try and kick down the door. Oh my we, god, please. No, no, we I'm... all keep trying it. <laughs> what do you expect of me in my pop ups room? I don't think they're getting anything. Pop Maybe money. It's your pop I expect there to be fucking money. Maybe there's clues as to why he's money. Cool. He does have a lot of money. He Let can, me roll. He can spare some for us. I think. Oh, uh, <laughs> six. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> can I try again? You try to kick, but uh, because you were made out of slime, your foot just kind of like. Like it, it, it kind of squishes against the door, oh, like expands outward around the spot that you were supposed to be kicking. It wasn't at twenty. 
What? The the bottom. Okay. Um, I, I, I launched myself head first. See, that complicates so much. God damn. Uh, okay. So, Elo is, like, looking at the locking mechanism for this door, trying to figure it out, trying to see if he can fit inside it. You, While you are, like, dropping your head down to, like, grab your Thieves tools out of your new funky little fanny pack, Dante, just right above your head, just <laughs> fucking spin kicks the door. <laughs> Elo, amidst the chaos, is gonna slip in and start looking for shit. Oh I will also look in. <laughs> yeah. Well, the door is open now. Dante yep. fully, like, kicked the doorknob off. Yep. I'm, I'm going like, in, and if I see Elo stealing money, I will not say anything. Yeah! Thank you! Okay. I'm going so we're describing in to watch people. room, but there's, like, a two-story situation going on with it, where the part that you enter is, like, his office area, and inside the little office area, there's a desk and, like, a couple bookshelves and, like, just, like, his general work stuff. Um, there's probably some paperwork left on the table that he wasn't able to finish because he disappeared, obviously. There's, like, a wall that kind of separates the whole area. And there's a door on the bottom half of it. And then on the top, there's, like, a little railing loft thing. And then there's another doorway to, like, a different room above that. And, like, okay. a staircase that leads up to it. Like, a little okay. curling one, like, you see in, see in fancy offices. Wow. It's just like in Minecraft, dude. It's just like in Minecraft! Anyone who wants to look for clues or little trinkets can roll an investigation check for me. I wanna- yes. I wanna find the big stuff! That. Big yeah, money! I'd like to do that. 15. 19. Not 20. Fucking Christ! Good yeah. yeah! It's a 10. Yeah. 7. Wait a minute. Is that the lowest oh out God. of everyone here? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I think Xanavar has very rarely ever gone in his dad's room. It's like kind of out of a respect kind of thing, mostly because Archimus didn't really like involving Xanavar in his business. Mm -hmm. So when Xanavar heads in here, it's kind of like he doesn't want to touch anything because he doesn't want his dad to get pissed at him for touching his <laughs> shit. Uh, meanwhile, all of his friends are like, like pawing through books and like looking through paperwork and like <laughs> opening his bathroom and like looking at his like medicine cabinet and shit like that. This is like a preteen throwing a party in an early 2000s uh, teen. After yeah. Elo's done investigating, yeah. he's gonna sit on the toilet and pretend. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god. Elo will about. pretend to dream and Elo will pretend to shit. <laughs> <laughs> Elo's gonna be a real boy. Okay, so among the things that you find inside of Arkmus's room. Okay, who rolled under a 15? I mean, me. Me. I yeah. got 15. Um, okay. Anyone who got 15 and under. Um, Mainly what you're attracted to is the stuff on his desk that seems like the most immediately important. You get general city paperwork, correspondence with some of the other members of the council, especially some of the other members of the council that are part of bestial races, like they try to stick together because the elves have been there so much longer than them. What Does it mention what kind of thing Arkmus is? <laughs> In the house, there have been pictures of Arkmus and Xanavar, and Arkmus is just like a big fucking lion. You oh, well, that- <laughs> I feel like we you all pass by that them. and do, like, a few double takes. Yeah, anyone anyone who rolled over a 10 would notice. Even on his desk, there's, like, a picture of him and Xanavar with him, like, ruffling Xanavar's hair. But his ears are sticking out a little bit too much, and, like, Xanavar's missing a tooth, and, like, you know, it's it's cute shit. I, like, pick That's up a picture of Xanavar's dad and, like, hold it up next to Xanavar, like, hmm. <laughs> I'm also very confused. gonna, like, also inspect while I'm, like, I feel like we're imagining all of us huddling around Gash yeah. also looking at the same <laughs> yeah, photo, we're like, like we... I, like, turned the photo towards him, like, explain this. Five sets of eyes turn directly to Xanavar, who's still standing awkwardly in the doorway. I don't understand. What's the big deal? Uh, well, <laughs> can't argue with How that, I guess. work, exactly? What are you talking about? You half elf him. Not half elf. <laughs> Maybe he just hasn't hit his growth spurt. You guys know that adoption exists, right? Uh, What's that? It is when um, a set of parents uh, does not raise their child and gives it to somebody else to raise them. Ela's gonna think on that. <laughs> that makes sense. I was raised by a human. Really? <laughs> yeah. We have something oh. in common. Fun. Hilo was really? also raised by humans. Well, oh, and he, and he like counts really? on his hand, like not all human, mostly. Well, I suppose that the three of us all have something in common then. I never would have expected it, honestly. I didn't really expect your father to be a giant lion man either, but 
you know, I suppose we are a bit of an odd family, but I, it's a good one, all the less. Oh, he looks like he loves you a lot in these photos. It's very cute. <laughs> Uh, thank you. It's why I've been uh, very adamant on trying to find him. Is there like a small hand, you know, like wallet sized picture of the two of them? Yeah, the one you're holding would be like easy to fold up and put inside of a little wallet. Okay, right? Hila's gonna steal that picture. Can I make an arcana oh my check? Gosh. Yeah, for sure. Uh, while you make that arcana check, I'm gonna describe what Fujio and Elo see. <laughs> Elo, I would like you to Wait. roll a sleight of hand check, and Gash, I would like you to roll a perception check. Okay. Please don't roll like shit. God. It's 25. Oh shit. 24. <laughs> Elo is so slick and so good at uh the fucking touching this shit. It it almost passes everyone by, even though we're like you're all looking at the same fucking picture. Like Elo is just so fucking slick about it. When Elo thinks that he's gonna get away with it, just before he puts in his little fanny pack, like Gash reaches out and grabs his wrist and just starts shaking her head. Uh, I would like to use my puppy eyes against Gash. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, uh, roll a persuasion check. Oh god, I'm bad at this. Okay. I rolled a 10. That's... Mm, not enough. I'm, like, impressed by the puppy dog eyes, but I'm also, like, put it, fucking put it back. I don't want to draw everyone's attention to it, but I'm like, no, no, no. Elo, <laughs> you can't. You can't do that to a man. Elo, with like a real legitimate look of sorrow in his face, puts the picture back for now. <laughs> I like pat his shoulder because I'm pretty sure I know why he took it. While this is happening, I'm going to say Fujio starts looking through the paperwork mm. on uh, Arcus's desk and you start to notice something about the kind of work that he's been doing. Because you rolled a nat 20, I will say that you start to see some of the financial records that Arkmus kind of had lying around just for like tax purposes and stuff. And on these little slips of financial proof, you can see payments that were made to Arkmus's account from sources that were not council based. Under yeah. the table stuff. Mm. Yeah, more mm. under the table stuff. That's a little fishy. You do wow. notice that some of the names on his council records do match up with some of the names that he got payments from, though. Oh, okay. Does he recognize just any of the names in particular? Well, I should have named the council. Let me come up with <laughs> the names. You see Penelope, Killian, the honey, it's spelled H O N I, Nesteria, <laughs> Delia. Uh, there's a Nathaniel in there. And then those are the ones that match up. You know what? Oh, Fuck it. There's are. also a Mushu in there. Place. That's fun. Y'all rummaging through my precious belongings and shit. Yeah, hey, hey yeah, they're not really. your belongings. They're your dad's. It's different. Stealing I'm family gonna, I'm going to inherit it them one day. <laughs> <laughs> not if my we find them alive fund. and well first. Elo, my trust fund. <laughs> There's a name on here that looks familiar. Elo. Yeah. Is that Elo. What is it, Fujio? I... I believe these are all financial records, and um, some of these payments, you know, they're not that unusual because I recognize the names, but they didn't seem like standard payments. Is the do you well, know about this? What? Are you, no, I. Well, he he's a busy man. I assume he'd be working with a lot of people. I. What do you mean? Strange circumstances. I don't know. I can't say for certain. It just didn't. This seems like not standard regular salary pay, and these sums seem a bit too unusual to be something like loaning somebody a few bucks to pay for lunch or something. <laughs> that, that doesn't make any sense. He's just Maybe he was into gambling. What? Mm -hmm. No, he's an honest man. He honest men win. gamble all the time. He, he wouldn't stoop to something like that. He himself said it was a fool's game. I don't think I... it's gambling, but... Something does seem a bit suspicious. It's not a fool's game. Is there anything I, I can don't... roll to see if I've seen anything like this before? Roll a history <laughs> check. 17 <laughs> plus a 5. That's a 22. You recognize payments like this in the past. It's kind of the undertable work that you had kind of performed in the past, where it'd be like there would be a name and then there would be no mention of like what happened or like where the money was going afterwards, like the kind of funneling that would happen if you were doing criminal activities with the money that was being sent through. 
And it, it kind of seems like the person who was receiving all of this money to do the criminal activities was Arkmas. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna wince at that. It's very similar to financial records you would have kept in the past. I'm looking very awkwardly at the rest of them. <laughs> I'm holding the paper like, oh, 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 God. oh, oh he's not gonna like this. <laughs> I'm obviously thinking Xanavar is gonna fucking like not like this shit at all. Um, would you say this is more like embezzlement or he's just being told to do shit? He's being told to do shit. If it was embezzlement, then Arkmus would have moved the money on to another account afterwards. Okay. But it just stayed in his own account. I turn to Xanavar and I show him specifically what what exactly is off. This is like what the kind of shit that I did working for the people that I used to back in the day. What are you talking about? He's... he. I don't know if he still is, but... He was being paid to do stuff um, <clears throat> that he wasn't supposed to. I don't know what it is, but... And we don't know the circumstances. For all we know, he could have been coerced or forced or had no yeah. other option. Like, I'm not going to make any assumptions, but... Um... That doesn't make any sense. He wouldn't do something like that. He was an honest man who taught me how- Listen, to... listen, listen. He... I understand. Um, and as somebody who has done the same thing, um, not everybody is what they is what they appear to be. This is absolute hogwash. He wouldn't do something like, like this. I've known him since I was a wee boy. I- you wouldn't do something like this. I refuse to believe this. You, you haven't been in this study before today, right? What do you mean? I know I've been a couple of times, but only while he's been in here, but I he I refuse to take this you. slander about him. This is absolute nonsense. It, I mean, that's, that's what it looks the numbers like. Are it's there. not slander this if it's true. Be, well, this again, has to be war. faked or something. We, we don't have enough information yet. We don't know the circumstances. This is just what we see before us. It could be I anything. Tap, I tap the paper. I, I'm pointing at the, specifically the council member names, and I'm like, corruption? <laughs> mm. Mm. You rich. and your father said it yourself. Sometimes these organizations can be rather corrupt. Maybe he wasn't able to escape it either. Stop talking like this. This is absolutely absurd. If I, I don't, I don't know what to do. I, I know he won't do something like this. I've known him my entire life. You've only seen a couple of papers that must have been the something. This, this is. I refuse to believe this. It's. What if they're Too forged? Much. What if somebody put them here with jazz hands? Implications! Hmm. This yeah. room has been locked. That would be very unusual. It wouldn't be uh, hard to pick the door. Elo, if you want to make an investigation check on the door lock. 15. 15, okay. It's a little bit fucked up from where uh, Dante broke it, but picking up the pieces and like kind of reconstructing them the way that they were beforehand, and holding a, using a little bit of yourself to like hold it in place while you like take a look from all angles of it, you can tell that the door was locked from the inside. Um, actually, the fact that it was locked from the inside is the weird thing. What about the window? If you want to make an investigation check on the window, you definitely can. Uh, this was door was locked the last time from the inside, not the outside. Whoever locked this door last left in a way that wasn't from the door. Also, I'm going to go back to snooping for things while they're looking around. Um, and th I rolled a three, um, plus five. Oh, the window was closed when you entered in here. Any locks on it? There is a lock, lock on it. It is unlocked. I turn to Fujio. I ask, do you think the council is trustworthy? Do you think the oracle is trustworthy? In, in my experience, I've hardly ever seen a council that didn't have at least some underlying corruption and even among certain religious institutes I've been to I've come to realize sometimes things aren't exactly how they seem either so I can't say for certain if I do hmm. if we ask the oracle about this do you think it would help it might or we might end up getting a bit of a target over our heads for asking questions we shouldn't be How's Xanavar? I want for you to look over at Xanavar. How's Xanavar holding up? 
he looks like really like his whole life is just coming undone. He just learned that like the most important guy in his life might have been up to some shady shit and he is like trembling right now. He's okay. not good. I'm, I'm gonna do a little small talk, like put my hands on Xanavar's shoulders, just looking at him genuinely. And I say, Xanavar, you said it yourself. You know this man better than any of us here. And it's obvious he loves you, regardless of the circumstances. We don't understand, we don't know. But we will get to the bottom of this. It'll uh, be fine. Thank you, Fujio. I, I don't believe any of what's on the papers. I can't... I, I, My brain won't allow me to believe it. I, I really... I can't believe it. I really can't. I, it means a lot to me, Fujio. Not this to be so the cool. worst person in the room, but while they're comforting him, I would like to keep snooping for things to take, because this seems like a Good golden morning. opportunity. I'm... <laughs> yeah. I'm looking. Uh-oh, Gash, you're gonna have to pick! I feel what like Gash is gonna do? focused on you know? I'll go, <laughs> what's going I'll just, on right I'll just make sure you don't fucking steal any more treasured family photographs, you know? Okay, Evo, roll an investigation check for me to see if you can find cool shit. Yes! I love cool shit. The one thing you can't replace. Okay. There's a lot of cool <laughs> shit in this room. Just in terms of, like, this guy had been around for a while. He has some cool shit in his room. You notice a little box on a table next to a little couch that's in the room. It's like a little wrapped box. It's got a little bow on it. Uh, it's clearly, like, a gift for someone. Does it say who it's addressed to? No, it's just a little box. I'm Probably gonna undo the ribbon and open it. it. On the inside, you find a little whistle. It's got like one of those little indents on it. Yeah, it's like a little tin whistle. Oh. Eh, it's boring. <laughs> Elo puts it back in. I take the box from him and I give it to Xanavar. This is probably for you. I don't know. What is this? Uh, a, a whistle? It's got a little cat paw on it. This is a nice little whistle. Is there anything else? Yeah. As you look around the room, there's little baubles and knickknacks. Some of them are like gold because Arkmus was well off. So if you want to just take cool shit, I'd say roll to see how expensive it all is altogether. I'm not stopping you from this one. You can take it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Elo's gonna start taking stuff, and then like as he's stuffing like the first couple items, he just kind of looks back over at Xanavar, and he just starts reluctantly putting stuff back. No. <laughs> Please don't take my father's things. I. <laughs> I haven't seen this whistle before. I Guess. truly don't know what to say. I'm going to keep this. He stuffs it in um, his bag and um, on his head, uh, and and he just kind of holds it close to him. He was gonna oh. go up the stairs. I'll follow. You said there were stairs, right? Uh, there yeah. are stairs that lead up to another room. He was gonna go look up stairs for anything important. I will follow. All right. So you go up to the little, like, walkway that's up there that kind of, like, separates the two floors on the other half of this part of the house. And you open up this door. This one's not locked. It opens up to a canopy bed, two side tables, a dresser, one of those, like, full wardrobe-type dressers. It's just, like, a little sleeping area where he sleeps. I would like to check, like, the drawers in the nightstand, see if I can find anything. Maybe, like, a letter yep. or something. Anything important. Oh, fuck, the Arcana check. Oh, shit. Oh, let's do Dr. Arcana check real fast. Uh, <laughs> I'll roll really quick, and then I'll just tell you after. Yeah. Okay, I will say, Dante, when you look at the tin whistle that uh, Xanavar got, you can tell that it's magical. It's a magical Ooh. object. You get the impression that this has been enchanted to do magic. So, like, there's probably a spell in it. Okay. I'll be sure to let the boy know. Too... Is there anything else in the room that's magical? I was also looking to steal shit, now that they're gone. <laughs> it's a bit easier for me to do that. <laughs> I would say it might actually be harder because it's just Fujio and Xanavar in there and both of them are gonna be like, fucking don't, dude. At least gonna, I would have let you take money. It. I'm gonna explain, I'm gonna explain. Okay. I, I do wanna know if there's anything inherently magical in the room. You do notice something particularly interesting on the table that you do recognize from past experiences. There is a bottle of fash res on the table, which isn't inherently magical. Actually, I would say it is anti-magic, because when a creature drinks it, they lose their magic for a period of time. Wait, what if you don't have magic and it gets on you? Does nothing happen? Or is this double negative? It's just water that tastes a little weird. Oh, but in a good way? Or in like a I mean, kind of. Way. It's an acquired taste. 
Like yeah. a club soda, tonic water. <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. It tastes like yeah. British lemonade. Um, <laughs> British yeah. water. It tastes like British. <laughs> it's just Connecticut tap water. water. That's about it, I think. Awesome. Cool. I'm gonna go ahead and go up to where the others are. <laughs> Great. Um, so Rugi wanted to look in those drawers. Uh, what did you get for the roll? Fourteen. So in the drawers, there's just like some basic bedside table stuff. Oh, stuff and junk. <laughs> He's reading a book. What is the book called? I don't know. It's a book. <laughs> the Very Hungry Caterpillar. Yeah. <laughs> the King um, James edition uh, of The, the Very Hungry Caterpillar. Caterpillar. Yeah. So I'll, I'll say there's about three books. So there's like one that's like the American classic for this universe. And then there is one on uh, recent religions. Is uh, Elo's yeah. going to absolutely take that book. I just want to see if it's the same uh, cult that we saw earlier that the that, that snake guy was part of. Yeah, the Annex Divinity is in it. It's on the oh, index shit. of the book where you, like, look through all of the religions and stuff. Mm. And there's, like, some ones that you recognize, like, Fujio's religion is mentioned. Okay. Hmm. I kind of, like, point to the Annex Divinity one and I'm like, cult. I go to Fujio, I'm like, um, is council in charge of religion? Is this something I would know? Xanavar would know. Uh, this city has an open religion policy that was enacted a couple hundred years ago when other races started joining the city. Originally, it was asking, only worshipping Oracle. Yeah, I'm specifically asking if the council has any say in or control of the, the religions. I mean, I guess if the Oracle is kind of a religion on its own, then it would make sense that they have connections, but... <laughs> Like, do they yeah. do they like sponsor any churches? Is what I'm is like I'm, what I'm getting at. Like, do they? I don't, I, I can't really communicate. Any Probably of them. not anymore. Yeah, as as a policy, they're not allowed to have favoritism one to and... one religion or another. Like, not even the oracle, which is part of the reason why recently the oracle was phased out as a political figure. If they're doing it under the table, then it doesn't really matter. But yeah. Okay, you can have the book, Elo. So is it yeah. just the books? There's like nothing else? You get the impression that the amount of money that Arkmus has goes to things other than home decor. Like, a lot of the stuff that he has is like, cool things that he found on his journeys! And like, with all the stuff around, you also get the impression that he didn't always have this amount of money, so the fact that he's like, has it, he doesn't really do anything gaudy with it, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna head yeah. back downstairs. Besides being in this big house. And check yeah, which is something that he got because he got elected into it. Like, it's not like he bought this house for himself. It's just a perk of yeah. the job. Are, mm. yeah. Are there so, any more pictures in this room? <laughs> yeah, there's another one. This one is different. It's one of Xanavar when he's a little bit older. So, like, maybe, like, early teens. And, like, Xanavar mm -hmm. is just trying to figure out his fashion sense, so it's a little awkward, but Arkmus is, like, playfully, like, licking his hair forward to mess it up. Oh. God, please. Uh, I'm gonna wait until everybody leaves. I'm... You already- you've already gone down. I've already fucking this. left. Fine. <laughs> I'm going to check if Xanavar is still alive. As soon as they're, like, out of view, Ela's just gonna quickly cast uh, Mage Hand to just grab the portrait and put it in his fanny pack as he's heading out the door. I like feel a twinge in the universe and I don't do shit. Alright, so you guys all assemble back down on the, the main part of this floor. He was gonna hand Xanavar the book that he found. I found up? it upstairs. It has a lot of the same stuff as that flyer from Marble's Cleft. I signed Colt again. This has to be a joke. This Mm, this can't be real, can it? Well, it doesn't Why not? mean your dad <laughs> liked them. Again, always could be coercion. But don't rule out the possibility. What are churches like here? There are a lot of them in the city, and a lot of- all of them are very small, and all of them are for different, um, religions, deities. Um, but for this particular religion, I don't believe we have a church for it. I can't really explain this. I don't know. They... they are new. So, the Annex Divinity, um, still really fucking weird to me. Um, I'm kind of suspicious of the fact that Fujio's god is being consumed literally. Um, we know that the Ugh. Annex Divinity is mm. 
taking over religions. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. kind of pretty too perfect timing, to be honest. If it's happening because of people's beliefs shifting, that makes sense. Or like people are noticing like that their god is like not there. Yeah. Weakening. Yeah. That would I make mean, sense. they're literally saying the old gods are dead, so that's yeah. their whole- that's their entire praxis, so it would make total sense. Okay, um, so I'm gonna say you guys, like, exit the office, because there's not a whole lot left to see in it, um, and you guys just kind of make- make your- make have a little nice evening, evening at Xanavar's house. Yeah. I'm gonna keep watch, actually, just in case. Okay. If anyone wants to stay up, then they'll have to hang out with the cow. <laughs> Gosh stays up for most of the night, making sure that, like, nothing is going to happen at the house now that they're sleeping in it. All the doors are locked, you guys remember to lock the window in Arkmus's room. You feel pretty secure in the fact that, like, this district is also, like, closed by a, like, a whole-ass gate, and it has, like, an extra wall around it, yeah, and it has like guards true. on it. It is, it yeah. is, it is very yeah. fortified. I'm also just gonna look at, like, the photos of uh, Xanavar and his dad. Aww. I'm not gonna take him! But I'm gonna, like, um... Can I roll Just an insight little... check on a picture? <laughs> yeah! Do you want to roll an insight check on a big portrait you see of Arkmus in the living room? Yes. 20. So you get a, you get a 20 not nat on the Arkmus portrait. You get similar things that I've that kind of said about Arkmus before, and, like, this guy doesn't look rich in a way. Like, rich. living a, a rich person's lifestyle without really having the, the experience behind it to really back it up. But you do get the sense that he's, like, very strong and has, like, been through some shit to get where he is. I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, you I... feel a kind of kindredness to this uh, portrait of this. Uh, in this picture, he's, like, smiling a little bit, like, in that kind of way where it's like, I have to hold this smile for a while, but I want the one impression of me in this painting to be of somebody who is happy. Huh. Aww. I can't relate to that, but I respect Aww. it. You get the impression that this guy didn't like to let on that, like, he'd seen some shit. Yeah. I, uh, I look at a tower where the oracle is through the window, and that's where I, like, I, like, go to sleep in, like, an armchair. <laughs> I, like, I, like, sleep in a dad pose. <laughs> that's more my style than yours. <laughs> yeah. Dante will be, like, reading a book, and he's like... There's a couple of armchairs to fall asleep in. Finally, a chair for me. <laughs> My son. Yeah. He was just gonna sleep on the floor. Zan retired like early to his bed to just like no one God knows. It's a comfort to be able to sleep in your own bed again, but it's it's a little sad because you know that your dad's not on the other side of the house also sleeping. He's sad. Yeah. He's crying. Oh, wow. oh. oh baby boy. <laughs> So you guys get a full night's rest without me needing to take any watchers. Because you're like in a house and it's fortified and it's fine. Who's sleeping in the living room? Um, I'll sleep in the living room. Uh, okay. I will too. Okay, so Elo and Gash are both woken up uh, pretty early in the morning, I'd say like 8 o'clock-ish, by a knock at the door. Ooh. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get it. <laughs> Um, I'm okay. gonna- Actually, I'm gonna wake you up before I get it because I'm like, I, I'm not- I can't explain things to people. Yeah, so you wake up Elo. And, um, Elo, Elo, Elo. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm just, I'm just, like, pointing at the door. Elo's just gonna get the door, I guess. Yeah, I'll, I'll... <laughs> you, you open the door Elo. to the president's office and you see these two chuckleheads. Um, <laughs> the person standing at the door is, like, just, just, like, a little, like, a little kobold who's got, like, oh, a, like, kobold. a piece of paper in his hand. He's like significantly shorter than both of you because kobolds are tiny. He's wearing a little suit. He's like a little dragon person. He's got a, he's got a little suit on and he's holding a little letter and he's got like this little he's got this little fake mustache on. I point at it and I ask if I can try it on really quick. When you like kind of slowly reach your hand out in like impulse, uh, the kobold just kind of like slaps your hand away from its face uh, with the kind of precision that a uh, cartoon butler has. And the kobold, like, lifts up the piece of paper, and you can tell it is a sealed letter. Uh, I guess I'll I take, take the letter. letter. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm taking it before you. What is happening here? What the fuck? You're not even at the door! <laughs> I'm you? at the door! I said I was at the door! I'm with you. Oh, okay, fine. Standing you can... behind you ominously. Then yes, why you the hell did you fine. You can take the letter. You 
can take the letter, but I'm watching. Okay. Elo's just having a hard time, like, with, like, gigantic people just suddenly being behind him or suddenly I know. away from him. <laughs> <laughs> Elo's gonna ask for the mustache again. Again, the kobold, like, because you have the letter, just turns around and walks out of the yard. Uh, oh. <laughs> I close Elo turns his fat, juicy ass away from him and walks back in. <laughs> I sign, I sign, you can, you can make your own mustache. <gasps> Elo morphed a mustache onto his face. <laughs> oh, that's I, so cute. Out of slime. I nod oh, approving here. Yeah. I'm gonna look at this letter and I'm gonna. Um, I assume you it's for Xanavar. Who is it? Yeah. Yeah. On the back of on the back of the letter in um like a like a beautiful script it says Xanavar. Oh. Shit. Ooh, specifically Xanavar. Okay. Oh shit. Uh, I'm gonna uh, dash up to Xanavar's room and just start blasting through the door. <laughs> Yeah, these doors aren't as uh, sealed as Arkmus's doors, so like yeah. Elo just kind of like slimes through the corners and recoagulates on top, and then does the same thing on the other part until you get to Xanavar's room. I am following. <laughs> <laughs> Mail call slap. <laughs> just right in his face while he's asleep. Just... I'm gonna like draw the curtains to his room to like let the sunlight in. You're just being as annoying as as, as humanly possible. He He's still has like human. tear marks on his on his face. He hasn't gotten his beauty sleeve. It's just like you got a letter, character. and I want to know what's in it. So open it and read it. He just got a letter. Uh, uh, couldn't I at least bathe first? Mm. Zan rubs his eyes and it looks it's really important. Where are the other people? I am an asshole, and I'm sleeping in his dad's bed. <laughs> <laughs> I was also in the uh, just the living general living space. You, like, hear all of this commotion, and eventually you follow Gash up the ladder. I imagine just Nanovar going up to, like, his dad's bed and I just, like, go away. Occupied. Occupied. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. got, like, it's oh, got, like so one of those cute. mattresses that's, like, made so that old people bones feel good on it. My god, the best weird. rest he's ever gotten in his life. So, <laughs> Zan now has this letter. And he takes the letter, realizes it's, it's for him, it's like, what the hell? I'm reading this literally right now. I don't care. See, I told you you should read it right now. Dear Zanova, my apologies for the briskness of this letter, but I imagine receiving information would be better sooner than later. I had a discussion with my employer, Councilwoman Asteria Ilthanum, about your compatriot's request to see the Oracle. Well, it was met with an understandable amount of barking on her part. She did say that she would Bring it up with the Oracle's Lord of Delegation. We should be getting word back tomorrow. Which brings mm -hmm. up the second point to my letter. Unfortunately, I'm occupied with duties in the Agropolis today and cannot drop by to request this personally. But I was wondering if perhaps you and your group would like to attend lunch at my employer's house. I am currently staying with her while under her apprentice. And I'm permitted guests. A lunch just seems to be more polite and fulfilling way to receive an answer for your request. After all, even if it is declined, at least there will be food to bomb on the disappointment. I look forward to hearing back from you. Au revoir. P.S. About your Sim friend's request on entrance to the university, it is an open campus, but the archaeology department should be in the West Building. I'm a bit rusty on that side, as political science is on the other side of the campus. Ooh. Elo just swing like, oh. <laughs> oh God, His God. mustache turns into like a villain handlebar. Mustache. Yeah, <laughs> Elo just. Oh. Elo go to university. Elo go to university. Elo get a degree. <laughs> Elo commit tax fraud. Puppy dog city. <laughs> puppy dog town. <laughs> We might have to wait until tomorrow, so that fucking sucks, but if I can get that correspondence at lunch, I'll take it. I'm just desperate to learn anything at this point, if I have to be very honest with you. Yeah, let's go, I guess. Um, unless, um, Hello? Uh, you want- You wanna get education? Go to college? What? No! No. I wanna sell this bone! I, that's what I- that's what I meant. Elo, do you want to commit crimes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If when is when is when is lunch? Uh, lunch the lunch is... would be tomorrow. tomorrow. So like then, midday. Yeah, let's, go, let's go fucking commit crime today then. Yay! <laughs> Come on, Elo, let's go. 
Okay. Zen doesn't even. Uh, he wants to play his flute like right now. Before I leave with Elo, I like stick my head and hands to like the door frame, and I'm like, Zanvar. What is it? Don't I, die. I'm in my bedroom. I don't think I die right here. Mm, you never know. See, you. anything could know. happen. <laughs> don't talk to strangers. <laughs> um, keep the windows locked. Oh, she's devilishly strange. Uh, I like them though, but I'm not used to. The type, I have to say. Oh, it's so cute. I love them. <laughs> Everyone gets ready in the morning. Dante eventually comes down the stairs and, like, cracks the bones on his shoulders above his head. And he's like, oof, oof, you oof. This is the first time we've seen Dante Ooh. without slouching. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, like, the, the, the straightness of his back is actually kind of jarring. <laughs> yeah. He's like, like oh, you're, you're tall. You, I remember that. You grew, you grew a foot. I think there's, yeah, like, so everybody... food already in the fucking, like, <laughs> still there, or is it all bad? Oh, I forgot to get food. Oh, well. It's probably all bad at this point. Uh, it's been, like, a year since Anavar has been oh, home. Oh, shit. Damn. There's, <laughs> there's stuff that never goes bad that's still good. Like, there's, like, a jar of peanut butter. There's some saltines that are still fine. Goldfish God, crackers. I could <laughs> up on some saltines and peanut butter. <laughs> it's it's the old man breakfast. From, like, my breakfast of time. Well, he's got a very yeah. testy stomach in the morning, so salt tea. Is <laughs> he's walking around the kitchen like he owns the goddamn place. Yeah. There's like some tea and some coffee that's still like good and like you can you can brew a pot of it and it'd be tasty for the morning. So you guys have, have an, a nice little breakfast. Yeah. 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 Shitty little saltine crackers and peanut butter. Gay people too. Yeah. <laughs> Gay people brunch. Gay people. <laughs> Alright, so what are you guys gonna do for the day? Well, uh, Ela's going to university. Here. Can I have a conversation with him while we walk? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you guys are headed to the university first. Does everybody agree to that plan? I mean, we didn't talk about it to anybody else. I just know Elo really wants to commit crimes. So I think you guys are trying to uh, discuss what you are going to do for the day at the dinner table now that you know that the Oracle thing isn't going to be a definite thing until tomorrow. Elo wants to go to college. Yeah, I would like to go. I, I'd i rather just chillax. Maybe I'll go back mm. and hang out at the marketplace, see what else they got. I don't particularly want to commit crime at college, but it's better than him going alone. So I'll what? Go with him. I don't need supervision. Mm. I can do it on my own. Well, I sincerely doubt that. We did meet in jail because I assume you committed crime. I if, didn't do anything wrong. If, well, if they wrongfully imprison you, you'll need someone to break you out. Mm. True. I do want to mention, you guys do have a job that you're supposed to be doing. Like, I was wondering, like, yeah. Why don't, we go see, why don't we go do our Hallis business first? Yeah, do and then, job first. And then we can go to college, and we can make it a fun little field trip. The bitter steep, we okay. gotta find it. Mm, side note, as we're eating shitty breakfast, she's like really going to town on the peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> she went like... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I am mesmerized. <laughs> Here, yeah. have some more. I have some on my nose. I'm like, That's actually I'm in really bliss. Cute. Good shit. So cute. So you guys head out for the day. And you go past the guard. They're a different set of guards because it's the morning shift. So they like see you guys pass by and like they're used to knowing who is in this district at any point in time. So they give you a look. But they also assume that other people knew what they were doing when they let you in here. So they don't question it very much. You go to the district. Xanabar, do you want to roll a history check for me? It was 19 plus 1. So not nat, but it's a 20. This fucking place has a reputation. It is known for its shitty tea and terrible customer service. My Your dad has told you not to go there when you've noticed it on the street, but you made note of it because you were like, but what if I want go there someday? What if I want shitty tea, dad? Like, it was definitely like a teenage rebellious moment where you're like, what if I like shitty tea? And then he gave you shitty, shitty tea and you're tea. like, I you don't, don't like shitty tea. Me. You know exactly where it is. It is on the north side of town in the old district, kind of in an innocuous area. But you know, okay. you know where it is. So... You guys head off to the Mayor's Keep, and, and uh, Xanavar seems very certain that uh, he knows where he's going. So you, you follow by Xanavar. 
it's a pretty quick walk from where you are and you don't have to go too far down the hills so your legs don't hurt the outside facade is nestled between two larger buildings with an alley to one side of it. It's a two-story building, so one of the shorter ones in town, um, and it's very narrow in design, and it has no windows aside from the two um, built on the front for display. But those windows have actually been um, covered with curtains, so you can't see into the building. When you get there and like you try to open the door, it is locked, and there is a sign on the front that has been flipped to say closed. The windows are really dingy, so it's hard to see inside, but the, the inside doesn't look any less dingy. I check the door. Is it locked? Yes. Well. I can uh, open it. Okay. I was going uh, to go down a much more violent route, but go ahead. Yeah. He was going to knock on the door first. Okay. After a few moments, there's no response. He was going to pick the lock. Oh, yeah. Make a check for me. 14. That does it. It's not a very difficult lock. Um, you undo it and the door pushes open. Easy peasy. Yeah. So the storefront is cramped and it's humid with low uncomfortable tables and um, enough hanging decorations to make the low ceiling feel even more claustrophobic. Gash has to crouch a significant amount to get through everything. Um, and occasionally like some like a ceiling decoration baps her in the face. Yeah. Uh, as, as you continue on through like the the many clusters of tiny little tables that's ev- that are everywhere, you get to the counter way at the back of the store. The menu reads tea, two copper, more tea, three copper, tea with good water, four copper. Um, and the counter is unmanned, but there's a little service bell on the counter. Slap the fuck out of that shit. Yeah, I was gonna say, Elo Elo wants to press it. (laughs) You both Like an impatient old man at a hotel who doesn't know how to be nice to service workers just slapping the bell. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Um, Yeah. from upstairs, you can hear somebody kind of like scramble from where they were upstairs and then go uh, around to the back and like the back around to the front. There's like a door that leads to the back from behind the service desk and this little turtle woman walks in. She's a short yellow turtle woman with a round copper wire glasses, a little blue beanie, a pale pink cardigan, and she looks very stressed out, grumpy, and like you just fucking disturbed a nap. Like her glasses are askew, like her beanie's not on properly. <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> How can I help you? How did you get in here? Oh, your door was unlocked. <laughs> oh, I I'm usually smarter than that. Ah, uh, yeah, Make a deception check the, for me really fast. Oh us. god. <laughs> oh no. Y'all there, better back me the fuck up. Is there a way to up. assist uh, Elo? Yeah, if you guys say that it's true, then uh, he can make it with advantage. Yeah. First one's a nat there. 20, so... What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe you. Um, she's like, I've been so tired lately. Uh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Do you guys want tea? Is that... You, you're here for tea? We're the, here, the... and then he gets in really close. On business. From Alice. Oh, you're the people Hallis was sending. You did say there's a lot of you and a lot of weirdos. Great. And she just kind of, huh? with her eyes closed, um, kind of gesticulates towards the door that she just came out of. It's like, yeah, come around the counter. I'll, um, I'll uh, get you caught up on everything. What does it mean to be a weirdo? Breaking yeah. into people's buildings. What yeah, so she so like bad. leads you around the back. The back room is loaded top to bottom with boxes and crates, like there's a backlog of things that are supposed to be shipped out that just haven't been. As well as a shitty little kitchen for the actual restaurant that just like, just doesn't seem like it gets used a whole lot. There's also a staircase that leads up to an upper floor which she starts climbing. Oh, and there's like a bunch of sliding doors in the very back that kind of lead out to a loading dock you can see through like paper blinds. She leads you upstairs. And there's like a bunch of rooms connected by doors but are sectioned off because the doors kind of make walls when they close. So she leads you into one of those rooms which kind of seems like a meeting room because it's got like a table in the middle and she sits on one side of it. Okay, I guess we all sit down across. <laughs> is it still small? No, the upstairs is uh, significantly more roomy than the bottom half. I think fuck. And even the stock room was like way, way like larger than the front of the store. You get the impression that uh, it was created with the intent of making people not want to stay there very long. I see. I, I, leave. Leave. <laughs> I want to yeah. leave right now. It gives you the same impression of like one of those ice cream stores that's run by the mafia. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, then you and you can't order anything, and like there's no furniture, and like, you know. 
she sits down at the table and like this this part is like way way more nice than the front of the store like it's a it seems like a nice place to like sit down and do some actual paperwork and stuff but she sits down at the table and she waits patiently for everybody to sit down i'm assuming you guys all do she rubs her little her little beak like the bridge of her little beak she has an exasperated sigh and she's like i'm so glad you guys finally got here you have no idea how stressed out I've been about this whole situation, um, and I, I, I could really honestly use some help. I don't want to get anyone else involved because I don't want to lose any more agents. But they all, they've all been there in their houses, and I've have, I have all this stuff that I need to get moved, and I can't move it until I figure out what's happening to all my people, and I just- it, God, oh, it's, it's a whole lot of shit. Sounds yeah. like a whole lot. Yeah. Yep, yep. It, it turns out when you manage a whole branch, when your boss tells you to manage a whole branch, you have to manage a whole branch all by yourself. Well, yeah, that's what he said to do. Yeah, it is what he said to do, huh? Mm. God. Sure seems like it. That's what he told you. Yep. He's, he's kind of a pain in the ass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when he sent that message telling me that you guys were going to go there, I could tell he was drunk. He seems like he's always drunk. Yep. Hmm. What do you need? <sighs> okay, so... uh. Here's a couple things. So I've, I have two of my agents that are missing right now. Um, Nessie, who is our broker. Um, she was very, very good at her job. It was kind of like a side gig for her. She really just liked working with money. She's a halfling. She's got uh, auburn hair, usually uh, done in braids. She's a very peppy person, which makes it uh, interesting to work with her. And then there's Serbio, who is our scout. He's a he's a, a young young kid, just got into the business. A uh, little tabaxi guy. Uh, he's got black fur and he's got a little white diamond on his forehead. He's really good at sneaking around and getting places, um, which is part of the reason why he's missing, I think. Basically, uh, what happened is we went to go um, make a deal with some smugglers. Scavengers, essentially. Uh, so they're the people who get the artifacts, and then we buy the artifacts from them, and then we sell them to chumps who want the artifacts. And these guys specialize in going uh, deep underwater and getting stuff from, you know, places that don't technically exist anymore. Uh, specifically the Beastocratic Isles, which are just that way. And she points towards the ocean. But they go in there and they get artifacts for us and we buy them at a loss and then sell them at a profit. And these dudes don't purely work with us. Uh, and I have a suspicion that they showed these items to other people before they showed us. Uh, Nessie was taking a look at them a little while ago, and one moment she was looking at the items, and the next moment she was just gone. Like, she was out of the room, left the room for a minute, came back. Gone poof, left her shit here. She's no longer here. And Sergio was working for me that night, uh, just moving some boxes and stuff, and I, I asked him if he saw where Nessie went. And he said that he would go check out her apartment for me. Um, so he grabbed his shit and he left and he never came back. So that all happened in one evening. I told everyone to take the day off the moment Sergio didn't get back to me on anything. So I've I've been here for like a week and a half uh, trying to figure this shit out on my own. I don't fucking want to lose anyone else. And it's just, um, I've, I've looked at these artifacts so many fucking times and I, I can't figure out what happened. That yeah. is quite odd indeed, I have to admit. <clears throat> Maybe they're cursed. Yeah, that was my thought. She, like, gets up and goes to grab them, uh, but beforehand she, like, puts on these, like, leather gloves. She's got a little office that's connected to the meeting room, and she opens it up. The office is a fucking mess, by the way. And she, like, goes in, she grabs the artifacts from where they've been sitting on her desk, and she, like, kicks the door closed with her foot, and she puts them down on the table where everyone can see them. There's two of them. So there's a dagger. It's got a bear design on the cross brace and a little mechanism for a pommel. And then there's a decanter, which is like a little bottle filled with liquid. And this thing looks fucking weird. It's got a little metal basket called a fiasco, which I learned when I was uh, trying to figure out how to describe this thing, yes. which like surrounds uh, the glass bulb portion of the decanter. It's intricate and has like moving pieces. Uh, and the bottle is stoppered with a similar metal and it's decorative, but it looks secure with a ring that connects it to the fiasco. The actual fiasco itself is like made up of sliding rings and little gemstones. And at the center of the decanter, which is the weirdest part, is this tiny little beating heart that's surrounded by blush pink liquid. Huh. Um, I tap Elo's mm. shoulder. What? Identify. Oh, okay. <laughs> I could do that. I'm gonna cast You're Identify on Elo. it. <laughs> So it's like a bleeding heart? Yeah, it's a heart that's like steadily beating like bump. 
bump. Ooh. Bump. Mm. It, it looks like it should be the same gray red that most hearts are, um, but the pink liquid seems to have dyed it, so it's like a darker version of that color. Mm. I think about the monsters that we encountered in the cave. Mm. So little Elo comes out of Big Elo's hand and like toddles on over to the items and puts his little hands on them. <laughs> um, I mean, wait, little... it doesn't hurt Elo if Identify touches something. Curse? No, it's it's just it's a just spell. magic. Oh, yeah. it's a physical manifestation because it, it's magic. also just part of him. So the first thing the little Elo touches is the dagger, and little Elo is like, all right. The Identify Elo says that this is the Displacement Dagger. Specifically, it's just called Displacement. You don't have to add dagger to the end, but sometimes it helps. This dagger has a little button that, while the dagger is stabbed into someone, allows the stabby to transform into a Displacer Beast. The form changes depending on the design of the dagger. And you, like, all look at the, the little bear that's, like, carved into the, the cross brace of the dagger. Hmm. Um, the stabby remains in this form until the dagger is removed or until the stabby is killed. Once out, the stabby takes two points of exhaustion and immediately passes out. Mm. That seems really useful, actually. <laughs> Can we have this? <laughs> I'm not asking that. And then little Elo walks over to the little decanter. This is the bittersweet decanter. This decanter can hold creatures in a pocket dimension, feeding on their memories. At the heart of this decanter lies an entity that feeds on memories. Getting out requires getting stolen memories back. Drinking out of the decanter grants one temporary random skill point boost. My there guess is are. that they're in the decanter. Here they are. <laughs> Found them! <laughs> yes. Well, they're in there. Are we supposed to go in there? Uh, I'm not uh, going in there. Uh, I, um, I just, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's part of your job description or not. I think I have to call my, my boss. Uh, Our no. boss, actually. <laughs> yes, let's talk to that. Alice. I'm not doing yeah. it, though. Ugio, you talk to him. Elo will do it. Elo likes Halas. Little Elo not... does like a little bow on the table and then like scuttles on off back into Elo. <laughs> Just on all fours. Yeah. <laughs> Every time it the identifies spell leaves him, it, it makes a sound. <laughs> I'm yeah. not so going in there. I'm also not going in there. Do any of us have to go in there? No. To get them back. Probably well, somebody to probably go. needs to go. I but... need more information on that. Yes, on we should ask Hallis first. Yeah, we should. Let's talk to Hallis first. We have uh, scrolls of sending. Okay. Yeah, 25 words. Uh, they can reply. But it's like if you have like a message that's less than 25 words, they're going to hear what you say after that. That's pretty funny. So the the whole thing about spell scrolls is that anyone can use them and use them as a spell, but you can only use them one time and the spell scroll is destroyed. Hey, Hallis, fuck you. Your employees stuck inside the canter going in sounds like a bad idea. What do? Also, there is cult nonsense going on. <laughs> I think it's fine. I think that's pretty good. Uh, which one's better, fuck you or good day? I, I personally think fuck you is great. We well, can't say fuck you, he's our employer. He's our boss. If it's casual Friday, we can send it. Is it? DM, is it a Friday? Is it? Let me roll a die real fast and I'll tell you what day it is. Important lore. Yeah, it's a casual Friday. Yeah! I vote for casual Friday. I'm also voting for casual Friday. Okay, but I'm not the one we'll sending it, so if he gets uh, on your asses about it, I'm not the one will send it. XXXXO. Oh. XOXO. <laughs> Gossip girl. Gossip love, girl. love and kisses. Yes, please tape the Gilmore Girls for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hallis, fuck you. Employees stuck in decanter. Going in sounds bad. What do we do? Also, there's cult nonsense going on. Love, Dante. <laughs> Yes, Ugeo yes. should send this message. That's I'm not sending this message. Ugeo send message. I Gash. can't- Gash cannot talk. <laughs> Why can't Dante send the message? It says love Dante. Yeah, it's funny. Otherwise, it'll sound like I'm saying, more. by the way, I love Dante. And that wouldn't be good. <laughs> that's gay. That's for that gay. gay. <laughs> I'll send the message. <laughs> oh, that's right. None of you are gay. I so, forgot. Yeah, right. we're- <laughs> I'm so glad we're all... We're all, <laughs> we're all straight. <laughs> Marsha kind of like perks up from where she's been sitting, kind of like making notes on everything that's been happening. She's like, I'm not fucking straight. 
the fuck are you people? Elo, Elo, what? I am not either. It was casual Friday joke. Elo just like, huh? Huh? Okay, so you un unfurl the scroll and it has the sigil for sending in it, which is like something you can copy down in your spell book. But like, you have the sigil and you know how to cast spells from sigils. So you just kind of like do your usual summoning that you would do with your spell book. You're probably the most equipped to cast this spell. Oh, I, I realize uh, this spell employees. <laughs> Hey, yeah. Alice. You gotta say love Dante. Fuck you. Empl Implies stuck in decanter. <laughs> going in sounds bad. What do we do? Also, there is cult nonsense going on. Love Dante. <laughs> hey, honey. What? That's whack. I'm paying you to go in, though. Please have fun fixing the problem. Also, cults? Wild. See you all soon. <laughs> Told you he'd be okay with it. <laughs> yeah, gas sign. Fuck that guy. Hey, honey, I'm 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 in love with this man. Well, Look, we have to do it right <laughs> now. I mean, we should do it soon, but we don't need to do it now. one of us going in? Who's the most equipped to go in? None of us are equipped, but you know, I'm already I'll, like ready to die. I'll do Let's it. Go. We don't know how long we'll be. Gone. Thumbs what if we miss same. meeting with Oracle if we go in now? I mean, I'm imagining oh. if it's a pocket dimension, time probably doesn't work uh, the same there. How many of us need to go in? Just one or multiple? Uh, if multiple people go in, multiple people have to recover memories. Yeah. But there's True. possibility that if only one goes in, then you they know, could get lost. I mean, too. I don't, I don't mind um, taking one for the team. <laughs> okay, go in. Woo! woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> I have to drink from this shit, right? <laughs> okay, so, so what basically exactly? what you gather by looking at the decanter is there's a specific sequence you have to fiddle with the, the little metal mechanism to like unlock it with, which is why the thing is sealed on top. Wait, wait, before before you go. Make an investigation. You know you guys can meet with the Oracle without me, right? In the event I know, this but takes just... Long. Actually, him going to see the Oracle sounds like a bad idea. I just have to yes, put that up Yes, I there. don't know. He should definitely go in. I'm just asking, should another person go too? I'm staying put. I'm not going in. I need to see the Oracle. Fujio, you go. Uh, 17 plus 5 is 22. I feel horrible okay. if Dante lost everything in there and it could have been avoided had I gone with him. Hey, you're here. young. You should stay out here. Like, in the event that some shit happens. Whoa. That's true, but also, you don't have any divine protection on your side. Yeah... I don't really care. Okay, whatever. If you want to go in by yourself, I won't stop you. If you want to go but with me, I think it's going to complicate things. I, it, it most likely will. But if anything bad happens to you, I'm going to be really fucking mad at you. <laughs> if anything bad happens, uh, we still need to free the people, so who yeah, we so decide who goes in after. If you're not back within mm, some time, I don't know. You guys decide, then we will go in after you. Okay. But w because the meeting is tomorrow, so at I, least I some be of us will so stay the, out. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Don't don't die. <laughs> Don't die. All right. The entire time while you guys are having this conversation, Dante is like solving this uh, puzzle like a Rubik's cube. He's like just on the last <laughs> sequence right now, ready to flick it. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to say something funny, but I can't think of anything. My hands are very clammy. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. I'm in. <laughs> so he slides open the mechanism on the decanter, and uh, while he's holding it, it looks like he kind of like missed into the bottle when the cork opens, and then the moment it closes, the mechanisms like shift back to con confuse themselves again. Mm. Mm. Can we carry the decanter around with us now while we wait for him, or is it just gonna stay there? We, we... should carry it. Yeah, we should take it with us. Yeah, fucking take that thing. I want nothing to do with it, uh, yeah. especially if it does that shit. Can we Can take we the have... dagger too? Yes. And Elo dagger. just like goes for the dagger. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that might actually help you find Sergio. Before he left, he took something similar with him. Uh, Nessie's apartment is over on the south side of the city by the lighthouse. Hmm. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna be carrying the decanter. <gasps> <laughs> all right, Marcia so... bids you all goodbye as you head back down the stairs. Hey, Describe what, what happens to Dante when it becomes pressing. Maybe we should have, like, written something on his skin to be like, you need to get out. Yes. That would have been helpful. That would have been helpful, but he's gone. That would have 
Oh, we're well. seriously messed with him. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Maybe he'll figure it out. I believe he can do it. I'm prepared to go in. I'd say it's 50-50. I'd say it's less, but we have many people here. Apparently, if he can drive a carriage better than I can, uh, I can think he can do it. That. I have not gotten a chance to drive it, mind you. You can drive it on the way to the apartment. More like compartment. <laughs> Sometimes I can still hear his voice. <laughs> We're going to the apartment now, I assume. Okay, so you guys cross through the city. Similar winding pathways. It's kind of like you have to go up and down a couple times because none of the roads are like straight across. But eventually you get there. You can see the lighthouse just a little ways away from where her apartment building is. Marsha gave you a little map that has the, the apartment circled. Pretty tall, way taller than the other building you guys just came out of. The shutters are painted like a pretty deep ocean blue. As you go up, She's like on the third floor, which is high enough for you to see the ocean from her window. And it's kind of like one of those situations where the stairs are on the outside of the building. So you, so you go up in like a little spiral to her apartment. The door has been kicked open. Okay. I didn't Two gold do says it. that there's it's a dead in. body in there. Mm, I'm not mm. thinking that bad. All right. So you get into the apartment. It looks like it has been trashed in here. Oh, there's no. a little bit of blood on the floor, on the walls all the chairs, um, and it's like a tiny little shitty apartment. The The interesting thing about it is there's like inventions everywhere, little little like half-finished creations. None of them are done or in a usable state. You can tell that most of these are just thought experiments, but like her whole house is just covered in like metal and bolts and fucking wires and shit, and half of it has been destroyed by this struggle. Uh, hmm. investigation check! <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it. I wish I was good at investigation. 14. 15. 14. <laughs> uh, 20. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Hilo is used to, like, looking into people's houses and finding important things. Everyone else looks around, they find the same kind of, like, trashed garbage that's everywhere. The same blood splatter that indicates that there was, like, a fight in here. There's, like, little tufts of black fur kind of wedged into places that have been ganked uh -huh. out. Uh, Elo, you managed to catch a scrap of fabric that's just, that's just been ripped off by the door. Pretty sure I know what happened here. It's not very YOLO epic swag. <laughs> <laughs> Looking closer at the piece of fabric that you've managed to pick up, it got caught because there's like a thick piece of embroidery. Like the, this was the corner of a very well made piece of clothing. Mm -hmm. What's what's on the embroidery? Is it like a name? So is it like a monogram or is it like a, more of a pattern? It's an intricate corner pattern that you would see on maybe like the bottom of a shirt or like on a shirt collar or like the bottom um, of a cape maybe if the cape is like stupid expensive and they don't care about getting it dirty, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just like all these like flowing lines and stuff. I have a pretty good idea of what happened here. What is it? I'm pretty sure that other dagger got some use out of it. Mm. That would explain mm. the fur. Hmm. Maybe. So is there a beast just wandering? Probably not, but it doesn't mean that it can't come back. I suppose we look hmm. for a trail they left somewhere. We haven't found anything here. That is true. There doesn't seem to be any paw prints in the in the blood on the floor. Like there hasn't been any indication that there's been a, an animal that's come through here. I don't think there was a beast in there. I think the fur came from the tabaxi, and... Oh, uh, that's right, I forgot that they were tabaxi. Yes, they, it mm -hmm. is a black cat. Um, mm, well, shit. I think we mm -hmm. should look for some kind of trail, because if, it, if, the, if the tabaxi is not here, then he, was, he might have been taken somewhere by somebody. True. That is true. I'm gonna roll an investigation check for that. You guys can help out if you want. Uh, I'm uh, gonna give you advantage. I'm gonna make my own roll. I'll make uh, my own roll. Ooh, that's a two! None of those are good. Those are ten. <laughs> ten, baby. I got a four. I got a nine. Okay. None of you ah, managed to, like, Sherlock Holmes, like, like, reverse engineer what exactly happened here and what direction they went after. But gosh, I will say... You remember back where you used to live? Gossip used to travel around so fast. And Nessie does live in an apartment building, so people might have heard what have happened. Let's ask around. You guys do it. 
I'll be back up. And I just, I walk out of the apartment, start, <laughs> and I knock on the apartment uh, to the right of us, if there is one. It's kind of like there's one on the front, and then there's one on the back, and then yeah. up a floor, there's one on the side and one on the other side, and then it continues up for, like, six floors. I go to the nearest one. Knock, knock. Okay. If you guys want to um, follow me, you should. Uh, cause... Elo's gonna follow, because that seems bad. Yeah, I'm also gonna follow, Cash. <laughs> There is not a response on the door. I check the lock. It is locked. There are no lights on inside. You get the impression that the person who lives here is not home. Go to the next apartment. (laughs) All right, so you go a floor up to the one that's like kind of adjacent to Nessie's house and you knock on this one and it does open. You get the impression that like there's a small halfling community that took over this apartment and the woman who opens it like has a baby on her hip and like two other small kids running around behind her. Yes, they open the door to eight feet of cow. (laughs) (laughs) And you open the door to three feet of tiny little lady. Uh, how can I help you? Oh yeah, I shouldn't say anything because I can't fucking talk. Okay. I move aside so that the others can speak for me. (laughs) Several pounds of cow move aside to Fujio, Elo, and Xanavar. I'm still behind staring at her. Somebody say something, please. Do you not have the apartment below you? On the first floor? Probably some kind of struggle or ruckus? I mean, a, a, a few weeks back, uh, it sounded like something happened down there. I didn't go down there myself. I mean, I, I gotta take care of my kids, but um, I was definitely worried. Anything you didn't, like, screamed. call the guard or anything? Who calls the guard? What are you, a I narc? Mean... <laughs> Hilo just kind of looks at her like, good on you. I nod. Well, there was I a mean... little bit of a scene there. Something not so um, um, child friendly. Yeah, she kind of like holds the baby's ear to a chest and covers the other one with her hand. What went down? Probably a murder, mm-hmm. honestly. A murder in this apartment. Yeah, I mean, that works with the neighborhood. You know what? To talk, I'm gonna roll a performance check because I can't. Yeah, for sure. Because this is somebody who doesn't know me. That's a. <laughs> Uh, that's a three! Someone help me! (laughs) What are you trying to get across? I am trying to ask if anybody in the apartment would know about, uh, Nessie. Because Nessie is the one who lives here. But it all just kind of translates to verbal staring. Yeah, it's just like expectant Mm -hmm. staring. Uh, do you want to ask me a question? (laughs) Ma'am? I feel like Fujio at this point tried to step in again to like help Gash, but I rolled a nat one, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, Gash needs to use yeah. your bathroom. <laughs> Gash needs to use your bathroom. That's fucking Can hilarious. I like try to get that question? Fujio is like the king of natural ones. Yeah, you have, so you many have ones. words that you can use, so if any of you want to ask that question, you just can. I'm trying to ask if anyone in the apartment complex would know anything about Nessie specifically. I'm gonna oh, ask no. exactly that. Cool. <laughs> okay, Thank you. Uh, I guess I guess the lower floors would probably know more about that. She has to go past him. Um, I'm not super uh, familiar with the people who are living below me. I, I got a lot a lot of got to take care of up here. My husband spends a lot of time walking around this place, so uh, he's gonna be getting back from the market soon. If you want to ask him, it's probably not a bad idea. We can um see about asking other tenants while we wait for him to get back. For sure, for sure. Thank you so much for your time, ma'am. Sorry to bother you. Oh, it's no trouble at all. If I if I can help anyone in the building not get murdered again, I, I, I'd just be darn feet to do it. <laughs> That'd just be dandy. Uh, that would just be dandy. <laughs> That'd be so nice if nobody got <laughs> murdered anymore. Yeah, she just kind of like waves you guys goodbye, closes the door. Is want to check out the lower apartments? For the sake of expediting the process, can we do like a quick investigation so that we don't have to roleplay yeah, everyone? Yeah, I can give you the information that the neighbors would have given you. If you guys could give me a group charisma check. Oh, <laughs> not 20. <laughs> oh, holy shit, what? thank yeah. you. That's a uh, seven. Oh, but it doesn't even matter. Elo, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my boy. I got a ten. It's the mustache. Okay. It's changing everything. <laughs> <laughs> I got a ten. Okay. You guys got all average except for Elo got an at 20, which brings up the average by a lot. I will say you get quite a bit out of out of the neighbors. Um, there's one guy who lives on the very bottom floor that's kind of like sunken in as a basement. He looks a little wigged out, like he hasn't really left his apartment in a while, and he seems like the paranoid type. 
when you ask him questions about it, he is, like, willing to give out information about what happened because he wants people to believe him about what the fuck happened that evening. Mm. Um, and basically, he says that Nessie hadn't come back, but her tabaxi friend came in and then two other cloaked figures went up to the same floor and then they came down with the tabaxi bagged and gagged Holy and shit. then uh, Holy shit. walked through alleyways. I just realized something. Uh, Dante went in. Does he have Dante Jr. with him or did we keep him? Dante Jr. has been holding on to like the throat of the decanter the entire time you guys have been investigating. Oh my God. Like, knowing oh. Dante, before he went in, he would have been like, I'm sorry, little buddy, can't risk you, and give him a little kiss. <laughs> the dude points you in the direction of the alleyway that they all went through. Uh, time to go. <laughs> Gotta go. Go. Gotta blast! So if you guys want to try and follow a trail, I'm going to need you to roll the investigation, Jake. 24. Detective Elo on the fucking case. <laughs> Damn, 20. Woo, Hell that? yeah. Way to go, Xanavar. So uh, Elo is like leading the charge here, but Xanavar, like when you're like just catching on to like what the idea of something is and you're like just behind somebody who's really good at it. Elo is like coming up with things, and then directly after him, Xanavar is like, Yeah, I just came up with that idea too. Like, I know, I love your I, I, these alleyways, I know these alleyways. Ah! My city! Yeah, I know this city. My yeah. city. Yeah. So you guys like weave and twist through alleyways because Elo, like, like a fucking bloodhound, is just picking up on things that you guys didn't even like fucking notice. Like, there's a scuff on a wall, or like, there's a drop of blood from like fucking Sergio because it smells like cat, and Elo's picking up on smells now. Oh, and eventually, your trail weird. ends at a sewer grate. Ah, uh, we're gonna get stinky. Stinky. Ooh, stinky. stinky. Maybe we should have brought Dante. Stinky. Actually, oh. <laughs> it has been nearly an hour, and Dante has not come out yet. Well, well I imagine it's gonna take a bit longer than that. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, mean I do. We, we, said, we said we said until tomorrow because we're meeting yeah. with the Oracle, and if he's not out after that, we're going in. The power yeah. of friendship. Okay. <laughs> the power of friendship, which is sending your friend into a decanter and then coming up with a great idea for him to jog his memory immediately after we send him. Yeah. <laughs> like the second you guys were like, we should have written something on his fucking arm. I'm like, God fucking damn it. God fucking <laughs> damn it. Shit. <laughs> yeah, so there's this fucking sewer grate. It's not locked or anything. It's a fucking sewer grate. I start climbing uh, in. I am Gash, not open going it. in there. You're insane. Girl. I shrug. You can stay up here if you want. Uh, can, Gash, can we, like, sit on your shoulders? What? Why are you guys afraid of the sewer? It's not that bad, and Elo just jumps in with oh, no yeah. hesitation. There's, like, service pathways and stuff in it. So, like, there's, like, the main area where, like, the sewage is going through. This is the outtake sewage tunnel, so this is where all the fucking nasty shit is. Alright, um, thank you so much, Ego. If you must, uh, I will carry you if you will go down there. Can't I just stay and go to the tavern and try to make some money with some tips? No! I... If I no. can't sell my dinosaur bone, you can't go play music. You just can't do it yet. And Sound you can't or... go play music yet. Elo's just gonna grab him and pull him down. <laughs> <laughs> so all of you, all of you are down in the sewer. It's kind of gross. There's like these stone arches that are like keeping everything together while like the fucking street goes on above. It's, it's pretty far down. There's, like, some parts of it that, like, slough down into, like, other parts of the sewer, kind of matching up with where the streets go. They're very beautiful sewer tunnels, but it's also- it smells so bad. It smells so bad in here, guys. Make another investigation check now that you're in the sewers. Okay. <sighs> okay. Please, please, God. Oh, 24. Ten, five. Okay, that works. You could say it had a higher DC than the surface. What does that um, mean? What does that mean? Uh, you don't you don't know, it's fine. It's a little bit more difficult to figure out the path that they went through. After a while, you start to get the impression that they were intentionally like going in weird directions. Like you end up going down and then back up and then around and then over and then oh, just like to just yeah, to confuse people. Yeah. yeah. The alleyways were also very twisty and confusing, but it's even worse down here. Like, Whoever is doing this does not want to be found. You continue on for a while, you pop back up in a different service tunnel, and you find yourself in the Noble District. Oh, uh -oh. shit. Uh... You are on the south side of the Noble District, so on the opposite side from the one that you were at before. I see. We didn't need to go through the poop sewers after all. <laughs> we could have walked from Zan's house, but fine. I guess another investigation check? Another one while you're up here. It's going to be way more difficult because this area gets cleaned up very frequently. 
17. I got a okay. 16. 14, 17. 7. Once you guys come up from the sewers, um, you don't see anything else. People are staring at you because you smell funny. You give a shit. Come on. Well, I give a shit. I want to take a bath. This is disgusting. Might be at a bit of a dead end here. I guess ask around more. I'm fucking out of patience. Nearest fucking noble person. Make a, make a persuasion check for me real fast. Oh no. With disadvantage. Got... Alright, babes. I've got minus three in that. <laughs> One, two, not 20! God damn it! God hates me. That's an 11. So fucking funny, okay. I have in another perfect, reality, I have this goes perfectly in your head. It planned out in my head and it didn't come out of my mouth. Yeah, you have a statement ready? In your head, it sounds like very to the point, very succinct. Like it gets your point across and just like one or two words and instead you just kind of open your mouth and you stare at them and then the person like looks at you and then looks away and then looks back at you and then immediately books it in the opposite direction <laughs> so you get the impression that all of the noble people in this area are like very averse to talking to you guys and they're very judgy mm-hmm. where to go to get information about something like this Xanavar is well, a noble he should be able to talk to them but I smell like a dog's breath right now. Uh, I need perfume or something, don't I? <laughs> I take my fucking flask of water and I just like spritz some on him. Oh, I was gonna say, Elo just like <laughs> dunks him in him. <laughs> the outside he smells like sea foam, on the outside he smells like sewer. Oh, that's true. Sewer. So it's horrible for half a second and then the next half a second, oh, that's nice. And then it's horrible again. <laughs> Yeah, just to make them smell better. In broad daylight, oh in view God. of all the nobles we were gonna talk to. You're kinda like half out of the little alleyway you guys were in at this moment, because you guys are about to go talk to people. And Elo just kinda like picks Xanabar up, shoves him in his chest, jiggles around for a minute, and then whips him back out. <laughs> and Xanabar does smell way better, but now he is covered in like the liquid remnants of goo. Not for long, it dries fast. <laughs> How fast? What? We need to get this as soon as possible. Oh, that was horrifying, but I actually smell pretty nice now. <laughs> the perfume. Yeah, he was just gonna, like, take it. his neck bandana and just kind of, like, dry him off. It, it kind of <laughs> dries as, like, a like a gel crust kind of thing. Oh, no, I am making things way worse. Oh, You're, like, no. patting with the bandana, and the, ban- the bandana is getting crusty at the same time that the Xanavar is getting crusty. Someone say crusty. 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 Okay, I really... I'm... <laughs> what the fuck yeah. do we do now? Somebody other than me come up with an idea, please, God. Why don't I just try talking to someone who looks important and looks like they might actually know something about this? Sure. That's pretty good idea. That's good. Vanavar, you see somebody sitting in their yard on a little garden table sipping some tea? And you think that they might have seen something because they live across this alleyway. Roll a That's... persuasion check for me, please. Ooh, all, all right. Fourteen. So you approach this person, and you just, you're, you're kind of slick all over. Um, <laughs> and, and this noble man kind of like looks at you, and like sees the people behind you, and kind of like gets the waft on the wind, but politely kind of just like wrinkles his nose and like holds his teacup, and he's like, Yes, how, how can I help you? Um, you look like you live here, correct? Yes, yes, it's been in the family for generations. And <laughs> you look at him and he's like a he's like a like a full moon elf. We kill like him. Fucking dark blue skin, like fucking pale blue hair, like fucking starlight eyes, that kind of bullshit. And he's just like sitting oh. with a little tinko. <laughs> yes, it's been in for generations. If you'd like if you'd like the location of the bathhouse, that would be on the north side of the noble district. Well, I would absolutely love that right now. Um, this is a question of an entirely different matter, I have to put it. Um, we are looking for a pair that, um, are some people, Sergio, Tabaxi, and Nessie. Tabaxi fellow, I, 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 they don't really come around these parts very often. Uh, there's, there's a good little Leonin family just down the way. There was that, that, that Leonin council member that went away. Ooh, what a scandal that was. 
Uh, but I haven't seen a tabaxi in ages. Uh-oh. I'm going to walk up behind Xanavar. Um, no, I'm not going to walk behind Xanavar. I'm going to fucking appear on the horizon, just making direct eye contact with him. Do you remember when Gash entered the fucking session and she was like walking through the city with like her great club in the middle of the street? This is this. <laughs> it's a. It's again. She's yeah. not moving. She's just fucking yeah, staring he, at him. He's definitely aware that Gash is there. Like he's okay. like, every once in a while he like he'll like peer behind Xanavar and be like, ooh, and then look back at Xanavar <laughs> instead of looking at all of you guys. Every time he looks, I'm like a bit closer. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Well, um. No, I haven't, uh, and a Nessie! I don't, I don't, I don't know anyone by that name, no. Can I roll an insight check on him? Yeah, yeah. he's lying, I can tell. Yeah, this dude's lying, this dude's lying for this sure. Fucking 22, baby! Tell hell me yeah, hell yeah. He doesn't want to be talking to Xanavar anymore. He's being polite for the sake of being polite because Xanavar is, like, wearing noble clothes and clearly belongs here, but, like, he also is, like, Xanavar was hanging out with you people you people smell. Also, Xanavar is covered in, like, crust now. Is he, he's not this lying. This man so is not lying. He just wants you guys anything? out of his hair. Let's fucking go, god. Ugh. But, oh. to be fair, you guys haven't told him the fact that there was, like, hooded figures and somebody being dragged away with a bag over their head. You just mentioned people. Xanavar, please. Um, please, please. Well, even if you don't know those names, there has been a murder in this area. And, and there were some people who were seen uh, carrying uh, someone with a bag around their head, and we were looking for any clues, basically. Be very appreciative, and would get out of your hair. Oh yes, miscreants! There were miscreants in the area about a week and a half ago, yes. I went to my homeowners association meeting just quite a few days ago, and I was talking to the others who live in this neighborhood, and they were all, "Ooh, what, what went down there?" And I was like, I'm "I don't know." Closer. They walked through my alleyway I'm just that way. I, I told them I, I I I called my butler to grab my rifle so I could take care of them if they came into my house. <laughs> Thank the oracle, they didn't. Did you know anything about where they possibly would have went? They went that way. And he points to the alleyway that's kind of adjacent to his house. Thank you. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go, let's go team! Goodbye! 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 FBI! Immediately get out of his hair. That's a nat 20. Um, I'm making a fucking intimidation check on him as I fucking book it down as, the alleyway. As you run past you, that thing where you, like, push your chest out and, like, move towards him. And he shoots back in his chair and his tea goes flying and he's like, Oh my! And then I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> fucking nat 20. <laughs> Worth it. Holy shit. Fuck yeah, it's so good. Yeah, so you, you run through this alleyway, and in this part of the city, uh, this is the lead up to the university. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and just before the university, there is a... like a library slash museum. So on one side is a city-wide library, and the other side is a museum where they collect artifacts and stuff from the surrounding areas. For There's like a little bridge that connects them. It's like a walkway type thing, and underneath it there is an entryway, and then past that is a massive gate along another wall that leads into the university. That's what you see when you go through the alleyway. Um, uh, which, where? <laughs> I'm on my, like, I was on the verge of just going into a rage so the adrenaline is still going through my system. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where to go first? Any ideas? Mm. The museum mm. will probably be a dead end. I think we should go there last. Uh, if you guys give me, like, a straight wisdom check, I can I can give you an idea of, like, what seems sure. the most sane uh, at the moment. Ah, uh, not an individual, um, I can tell I you. I got a 19. That's a 19 as well. Elo might be hung up on the bone again. Elo has seen the university and is vibrating, contemplating bone. I am thinking about ditching this dumbass party. <laughs> yeah, so Fujio computes everything in his brain and is like, that way. And he points straight to the university gate and he's like, there's no way they would have entered those other buildings. They're dead ends. There's lots of places to hide in the university. Just fucking rafts and like fractals everywhere. Ooh. As he talks, I'm walking. Yeah. And you all head towards the university gate. Elo just at the gates like, let me in! Let me in! Like Irivois said, it's an open campus. So Moonbright University is through another wall with like a- with a gate. This one doesn't go up, it opens inward. 
Um, and it's like this iron wrought gate that's like very elaborate and like there's like a scroll along it that says something in Elven. I don't think any of you speak Elven. I speak Elvish. You do? I do. Oh, um, Zen speaks Elvish. It's basically the Elven equivalent of Moonbright University, but like it has it has a different meaning in the language. You guys walk through it, and on the other side, there is a big pavilion that is flanked by three separate buildings. In the middle of the pavilion area, there's a bunch of students sitting on the grass reading, moving from class to class, practicing spells, talking to friends on benches, you know, shit like that. Just basic university student shit. You can see behind the main sets of buildings, there's a couple of other buildings behind them, and they're all connected by pathways that are connected to a central statue in the middle of the pavilion. The statue is of an elf with elegant features, holding a single crystal orb with his eyes covered by a veil. In his other hand, there is a scroll with another set of elven runes, and it says, In the past, wisdom. In the present, certainty. In the future, potential. General fucking university platitudes, shit like that. But it also should be noted, it's not just elves up here. Like, there's there's other races that are, like, milling around, too. Who has a good investigation? Uh, me. I will help you. Elo, roll investigation, um, please. Okay. Go, Elo, go. What's that? Elo, go. I have a oh, 24. Let's, Damn, let's go, lesbians. Let's go. <laughs> let's go, Jokes. Let's go. You start looking around. You, like, look at all the students. And you, like, look at the pavilion. You look at the grass. Like, this area is way too open for something like uh, a kidnapping to happen in this area. And you get the impression that you guys took a more direct route to the same location you would have ended up in anyway. It, like, kind of catches your eye that this wall is less secure than all the other walls. Like, they're not fortified, so there's a possibility that this isn't the only entrance into this part of the city. And you see that to the right of you guys, there is a pathway that leads down to another gateway. Ooh, let's go. This is kind of like a back building. It seems like it's not used very frequently. So you guys uh, get to this building. There's a door inside. It has been padlocked, so it's not a natural lock on this, or like a fucking door lock. It's like... You know, big, thick, bolted lock on this door. I'd like to pick that, please. Chilly, oh, that one. You, look, uh, you get the impression that, like, the inner mechanisms are kind of fucked up, and the only thing that would really be able to jostle it open would be the key. I'm gonna fucking break the door down. Okay. Make a roll for it. Athletics. Yes, yeah. not 20. You break the door open, and from behind the door, a creature bursts out uh, and immediately starts running towards the center of the campus. A blur of black that just shoots past all of you, phases through all of your bodies, kind of knocks you back with the force of it, um, and it just keeps galloping towards uh, the pavilion. And behind it, there are like little little fading marks of where it used to be, and like its tails kind of look like after images, but there are like multiples of them. Yeah, the beast is running towards a heavily populated area of students. Um, we found Sergio. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's where I'm gonna end that for today. Um, okay. I would like okay. to jump back to Dante for a second. <gasps> mm-hmm. Ooh. You, like, phase into it kind of like you're stepping through a door, but, like, you feel your body coalesce into this uh, sense of being inside this new object, and you feel disconnected from everything around you. It kind of feels like you're in this, like, foggy pink chamber for a while, and you walk around for a hot minute. You walk until your thoughts start to drift, and as your thoughts drift, you catch little glimpses of things in the fog as you pass by them. You think, oh man, this is the most boring thing I've ever been through, and you like catch a hint of a class you took as a child, and it's like, oh man, I kind of wish I had people around to like fucking rib while I was doing this, and like a fucking picture of Fujio passes by. As you move forward, it feels like it takes longer and longer, and it doesn't feel like you're getting anywhere. And you're like, man, I wish I wish I had someone I could talk to. And like another like picture of Elo like slides past you. Um, and again, like you're stepping through a door that's like it like has that it has like a spray of mist in front of it. Like you step through it, and you feel your your face just like just fucking misted with this uh, fog that's like everywhere. And as you step through it, um, you enter a moment. Uh, it's something you don't think about very often, but you know where you are, and you know what hallway you're in, and you remember the smell of this place so intimately. It's, it's the smell of fresh cooked baked goods. It's the smell of wood after a rainy day. It's 
the sound of laughter coming through the floorboards below. It's it's the sound of tiny footsteps running across wooded floors. And you hear somebody call to you from another room. She says, Dante, come back. They want to say goodnight to you. 